the light, we had a, yeah. as they say, the only, the only sure thing about technology is it's unpredictable, right? So we, the primary projector's here, so now we can get started. I want to thank everyone for coming out today for the um, October monthly meeting of the Cam Creek Business Association. We have a jam-packed program, um, so wanted to really get, get through the announcements and get to the, the introductions and the speakers we have, because we're obviously always limited on time. So in terms of announcements, um, actually before we get started, I want to bring up um, Tom Calloway from the City of East Point. Um, there's a City of East Point Ward B. He's got an announcement, just a few minutes, yeah, uh, about his Operation Clean Stop in the City of East Point uh, with Marta, Marta Bus Stops. Thank, thank you, Mr. Davis. And um, I, I'll be very, very brief, y'all. I, I realize we have uh, Chairman Eames here today, and we all really want to hear what he has to say. Uh, but uh, about three minutes, elevator pitch. What it is is uh, we've all done budgets before. You know, you look at your budget, you look at all that you have your wish list, and you have what you can afford. Well, in the city of East Point, uh, trash cans at our MARTA stops fell below what we could afford. So we looked at inventive ways to finance these, and what we did is we partnered, partnered with the MARTA Army, which is a nonprofit. Uh, a lot of folks over at Georgia Tech are involved in it. Uh, but you can go to www.cleanstop.org. It is the largest crowd, uh, the largest one ever attempted non-space specific crowdfunding platform. So what it has done is in the city of East Point, it allows individuals to go to cleanstop.org. They choose the bus stop that is right outside their home or nearby, the one they drive by every day. They can actually donate to that, and once it hits $200, they can purchase, it then purchases a trash can for that MARTA bus stop. Um, we have 317 bus stops in the city of East Point, several of which are right here in the Camp Creek, uh, Camp Creek area. We're working with the Airtropolis CID. They're, they're on board with this. So um, you know, we'll be talking to them about getting all those trash cans funded. Once that $200 is hit and it gets funded, um, what they will do is the, they, the city of East Point will pay to install this. This is Simon Barabee, Executive Director of Marta Army. The city of East Point will pay to install that trash can, and then we will continue to maintain that trash can. So check it out, cleanstop.org. The only ask I have for you today is if you bump into somebody at the Airtropolis, let them know that this is uh, so you've checked it out, you like the idea, or you can run out at the end of this meeting and give them a call and let them know. Are you guys coming to the open house tonight? They're having? Yeah, we will. We will, okay. we will be there. So what, what I'd like to do is, is I, I think this is an ideal play for businesses. And I think it's an ideal play where businesses can individually support that and sponsor it. So let me know if you want to formalize what we've been talking about. Sure. So we need the business community to, you know, to, to sponsor a stop. Because the idea is to have you know, uh, great curb appeal, all that stuff wherever we can, where, where those bus stops are with trash especially. Absolutely. And uh, one of the things we're looking like I said, if the CID doesn't step up and fund all of them, um, then we certainly will will have that, and then there will be other opportunities down the road when it comes to street furniture. Okay, all right, wonderful. Thank you, Michael Davis. Keep, keep, keep us keep us in in, in, in tune. Okay? We we will um, please sign up with uh, with Simon at the end of this, and he can keep everybody on the email list, and we can keep you abreast. Okay, thank you guys. So in terms of announcements, um, for those who who are on our online list, um, we've been very busy. We we just completed a whole rebranding. Uh, we have a brand new website that's out. Um, and um, the website address is campcreekbiz.org. And what we what we've actually done for 2017, we've also formalized the programs we have for next year, like Camp Creek Cares, what we do in the community. We're also launching in 2017 um, Small Biz, which are a series of uh, expert business seminars that members will have access to. We're also launching our membership platform as well. So uh, campcreekbiz.org, you'll see a lot about it. The other thing that, that we did, I also want to thank uh, EJ Mayors, if you can raise your hand. Uh, EJ's Mayors uh, company, Market Fresh Idea Corporation, did our new website. Uh, we've gotten some great feedback. I want to thank EJ, one of our partners, um, for facilitating us getting a, a, a top shelf website, which I think is beyond many of the business associations. So thank you, EJ. Well, um, second, one of the projects that EJ and I saw as, as, a, as a need is getting all of the business associations and chambers together from an event perspective. So uh, we're going to do an ask today. We're launching a new website called uh, South, Metro, South Metro Connect. And what we need is beta testers. And the goal of this platform is we're going to get all the events from all of the business organizations, community organizations in one place so we can look to unify all of South Fulton. 
And we have a, uh, I looked at the website this morning, I saw if you're a beta tester, you have a chance to get a complimentary copy of Think and Grow Rich. So if you go out to southmetroconnect.org, please go there. So if you think about it, if the city of College Park or Chairman Eves, Fulton County has events or community events. South Metro events. events. South Metro events, thank you. Southmetroevents.com. We're going to have all those events there. We're going to pre-populate them and then have a simple enough platform we can reach out to communications and the municipalities, die at the chamber, and people can go to one place to see everything for South Metro. So, so it's southmetroconnect.org. Southmetroevents.com. Com, excuse me. And then campfreebiz.org. He, he's the technology guy. So, so with that, let's quickly do an introduction so we know each other, we can network later, and then we'll bring uh, Mr. Chairman Eve on. Um, EJ, you want to start? Sure, sure. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is EJ Mayers. I'm the president and CEO of Market Fresh Idea Corporation and the owner of Local Door Coupons Atlanta. I'm Michael Cahill, founder and president of Visible, a digital marketing agency. Good morning, Darius Rollins. RBM Consultant. RBM Consultant. I'll finish your introduction for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Nina Riley. I'm the owner of Elliott Occasions Med Center um, in Fabron. Good morning, Mitchell Brown, Executive Director of Resources for Residents and Communities. Michael. Mike Simpson, my wife and I own the Atlanta Airport Guide, now known as the ATL Guide. Good morning, I'm Tony Young from Tony Young All Star Karate Academy. Uh, we're in the city, we teach classes for children and adults. We have karate, kickboxing, and title over classes. Good morning, Steve Langford, Ackerman and Company Commercial Real Estate. Good morning, Terrence Lewis with Midtown Bank. Good morning. Uh, I introduce myself, Thomas Callaway, uh, city of East Point, but also that's my night job. My day job, I own a small residential construction company, Atlanta Custom Tom Construction. Hi, I'm uh, Simon Barabee, Executive Director of Marta Army. Arnie Jones, Economic Development Director, City of Dallas Park. Uh, Tamar Patterson, owner of a financial planning firm called Blue Cover Financial. Okay. Well, we introduce our, our, uh, our first speaker. Uh, if you've been in Fulton County for a, for a while, he should be a very familiar face. Uh, in November 2014, um, Dr. Hughes was elected to his third, fourth term as chairman of Fulton County government. Um, he has had a distinguished career that encompasses academic, educational, the educational world, community service, and business leadership, both domestically and internationally. Uh, when he's not doing work for the citizens of Fulton County, he's also an executive consultant at Talent Quest. And um, what I found interesting with your bio that I didn't know is that um, before politics, you had a seven-year stint as a Southeast Regional Director in the Peace Corps. Um, and then I guess what I learned also at lunch and what you're most proud of is when you were at Morehouse College, you were, you were on the football team and you were led it for four years. And um, you they also were the, senior, the captain team your senior year. He also has a master's degree in, in religion from Yale University, a PhD in education administration from the University of South Carolina, and he resides in Atlanta um, and is a dedicated father of two children. Please welcome Fulton County Chairman John Ames. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Michael, for the invite, and um, I'm just happy to be a part of the program. Uh, you have two uh, speakers today, me and Artie Jones, and Artie is going to win the Best Dress Award of the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually, to a certain degree, we are a tag, tag team match in terms of him talking about economic development, perhaps from a College Park perspective. And I'm going to talk with you about something that's very, very exciting. Of course, you all know a little bit about it. Um, that's going to be part uh, T-Splash or part economic development, but more importantly, uh, really will be addressing some of the infrastructure needs of Fulton County in general and in South Fulton in particular, and that's the transportation splice. This is the first time that Fulton County has had the potential um, special purpose local option sales tax for transportation infrastructure, infrastructure purposes for Fulton County. This is the first time. Other counties have done it, but we have not done it. Uh, we've been allocating a penny towards Martyr for well over 40 years. And when you look at this um, sales tax, uh, it will generate 
uh, $570 million uh, over the next five years. And I've worked with uh, the, the mayors of our county, from Alpharetta down to Fairburn, of course, listening to your, your introductions. You are from College Park, Eastport, at Fairburn, perhaps even the unincorporated area. And so I met with the mayors of each um, jurisdiction, and we reached a consensus on how we were going to move the needle in terms of addressing infrastructure needs. And so uh, earlier, uh, this late spring, early summer, we reached this decision. And so we have before us um, a vote of saying yes or no, but hopefully yes, I want to allocate three quarters of a penny towards transportation uh, projects in Fulton County. And so friends, we're talking about Fulton County, South Fulton, South of Atlanta, and North Fulton, North of Atlanta. As a, correlate, uh, a parallel track, the city of Atlanta has its own t -splos, um, 0 0.40 of a penny, and as well as a martyr, um, half a penny. Uh, does that all sound kind of, kind of confusing? Uh, maybe not, and hopefully not. The, the good news is, between these questions, we're going to be making a major leap as a county, and to a certain degree as a region, towards not only infrastructure needs, but also transit expansion uh, within um, especially Atlanta. So I'm very excited, and the uniqueness of this uh, referendum is, of the $570 million, the monies are going to be appropriated based on the population of uh, each municipality. So College Park, East Point, Union City, Fairburn, et cetera, uh, will get their parata share based on the population. And each city and the unincorporated area, each of them has developed its own project list. So we think that that is a big advantage over what was done in the past in terms of the Transportation um, Investment Act that was done back in 2012. Some of you probably remember that, which failed. But we're very optimistic this is going to pass. We did a poll uh, a couple months ago, 68% approval rating. Um, however, the thing that we were just a little concerned about is that a lot of people didn't know about it back then, two or three months ago. Hopefully more people know, it about, know about it now. So we need you as business leaders, business owners, to over the next uh, two weeks, in fact, just less than two weeks, get the word out and get your employees and your customer base to vote yes for this um, referendum. And, um, and so I just want to ask you to help us out. Uh, it's a win-win for our citizens. It's a win for you as business owners. It's a win in terms of economic development. I will say, related to this, um, Fulton County started early voting on October the 17th. And we have gone from October the 17th, and we will do it through November the 4th. And I am just incredibly proud and excited about the turnout so far. We have had uh, over 100 and 20, 30,000 people to early vote, uh, compared to um, about 50,000 in DeKalb, and even fewer than that in Gwinnett. And so we have been just rocking and rolling. We have 24 early voting sites, um, some of which are in this area, East Point, College Park, Union City, each of them has a site, and the unincorporated area has a site. So we're pushing early voting. And there still is, there still are nine more days. So during the week, seven to seven, Saturdays as well, and Sundays is 12 noon to 7 p.m. So we're pushing early voting, and uh, we expect, believe it or not, about a 70% uh, turnout during the whole election cycle. There's a lot of uh, interest, obviously, from the presidential election, but we think it's really important for people to vote all the way down. And the last questions are dealing with cityhood if you're unincorporated as well as this T's plus. So, Michael, thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to just give you a big overview uh, talk, introduction. Any questions that you may have, feel free to ask them of me. But the most important thing is get the word out. Michael Simpson was very helpful. He did his own thing. 
in terms of developing uh, this little pamphlet that um, on his own uh, in terms of getting the word out. So uh, we want to ask you in your own way, whether it's EJ uh, as a marketing person, um, Terrence, you know, whatever, uh, you're in College Park? There you go. So whatever you are, whatever you can do to get the word out will be greatly appreciated. So, Michael, thank you so much sure. for the opportunity. Before we have questions, I want to say that there's a packet in front of you, and it is all things t -splost. So if you look at this right here, you have enough information to be a panelist on t -splost and <laughs> hopefully support it. But what you'll see is a sample ballot for what you'll see if you haven't voted already. There's also a list of by municipality for every project, tier one, two, three, what the project is, what category it is, and what the funding is in the packet. And what I think is probably most powerful is there's a sheet called information document, which is roughly about 10 pages of uh, really an FAQ, so you can understand all the questions beyond after you say yes, what that means. Um, so, you know, at, at the appropriate time, you know, with the governors, please review this. Like the chairman said, share it. But I just want to let you guys know you, you're empowered now. Right. This packet's here. I also have this on the Facebook page if you want to share that electronically. But I just want to get that in before any questions. But please um, ask questions about South Fulton while we have him here today. And just related to what Michael's saying, to me the, the, the greatest fear is, and I'm going to say this, is apathy. Not so much people are just uh, uh, uninterested, but it's just people may not necessarily be informed. There's no real organized opposition to this because most people get it in terms of our transportation, our traffic challenges, not just in North Fulton, but also in some cases in South Fulton. The need of resurfacing streets is a big issue in South Fulton. Um, and so the biggest challenge is getting the word out and informing our electorate that this is a, on the ballot. And once people find out, they are making I think well-informed and educated decisions. It's just a matter of getting the word out. So any questions that anyone has, again, the clock is ticking. We need to get as many people informed and out to vote between now and November 4th for the early voting, and then, of course, November 8th, which is Election Day. Well, but we, we've had all yes votes, so. Okay, all right. Well, listen, thank you. <laughs> and even if you don't live in Fulton County, you can still put the word out and encourage people because uh, as an elected official in the region, um, mm -hmm. there is growing indication that if Fulton County is successful in this, you're going to see other uh, regional governments begin to have a similar thing, thing because we all recognize that this is a regional issue and challenge. So thank you for what you're doing in, um, in, uh, along the Camp Creek Corridor and in South Fulton in general. Uh, your efforts, large and small, are being are appreciated. And there's a strong future for South Fulton. And I do believe that this t -splos is a part of the equation of success mm -hmm. for the future of this part of the county. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, we've got uh, a T-SPLOS video of Reef your Fulton County will play right now. And I know you've got a commitment. Yeah, I have another commitment, but Renee Starzik, she's my director of communications. She may hang around a little bit, but she's got some information as well. So, but Michael, thank you. And thank you, sir. And everyone, thank you. Michael uh, Simpson as well. Thank you for what you've done. nothing worse than watching a silent movie, right? <laughs> Without subtitles. Sing it for us, Mike. <laughs> my, my daughter sings, I don't. <laughs> but let, let's go ahead and, and, and move to our, our next speaker. Um, you know, one of, one of the exciting things I think in, in South Fulton is there's a real buzz about what's happening in College Park. And our, our, our next speaker is probably the main catalyst helping to transform College Park into one of the most sought after places to develop in South Fulton. Um, Artie Jones is a graduate of Valdosta State with a Bachelor's of Political Science uh, as well as a Master's of Public Administration. Uh, prior to joining us as the Economic Development Director for the City of College Park, uh, he also served in the same role for the City of Brunswick and the City of St. Mary's in Georgia. And what I found most interesting about Artie and his wife, I didn't realize Artie not only had five kids, but the age range 
is bear, brace yourself for this. The age range of the five kids at home starts at four and goes to 22. You are very, you are a very busy man. <laughs> so, so we're, with that, we're very excited to have, um, like I said, new energy, the catalyst behind economic development in College Park. Uh, develop the, the director of economic development, Mr. Artie Jones. Thank you, sir, for coming. <laughs> Work, but lunch is not, so we'll do it this okay. right. We haven't tested that laptop. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Michael, for uh, inviting me out this morning. Um, and thanks for everything that you do here uh, with Camp Creek Business Association. And um, I have one thing to say about, I guess, the election that's going on right now. Um, if anything, if you haven't voted yet, try to vote early. And if you've already voted, think of five people who have not voted that you think is, are unlikely to vote. And please encourage them to get them out to vote. Um, not only are there major ramifications on the national ballot, but there are also a lot of local uh, issues like the t spots and also with the, uh, the education uh, that everyone should chime in on and, and give your opinion and, and place your ballot. Uh, very important election year. Again, my name is Artie Jones, and I'm responsible for economic development with the city of College Park. And I've been here, oh, November will be three years that I've been here in College Park. Before I was in Southeast Georgia, most of my adult and child life. Uh, but I feel that you know, the South Metro area is a fantastic area and there's some great things that's going on. And college, a lot of great things are going on in College Park as well as East Point, Hapeville, the Tri-Cities area. And I feel that uh, we have great opportunities right now if we just embrace them and we take advantage of it. But I feel uh, when I can Summarizing College Park, I feel that the city of College Park itself is probably the 11 most important square miles in this state of Georgia. And why would I say that? Because I work there, not only because of that, but because Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is within the city of College Park. Advantage. Um, College Park is a great place, uh, not just because of where it's located, but also because you know, the, 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 the major uh, uh, interstates that are there. Also, that we have light rail, and also we have heavy rail in College Park. And also that it's lo located in Atlanta, Georgia, which is one of the most diverse places on the planet. Advance. College Park is the home to several major industries. If you didn't know, uh, Chick-fil-A's corporate headquarters in College Park, and also Cisco Foods is in College Park. The second largest uh, Cisco Foods operation is within the city of College Park, and Cisco Foods has 50 uh, uh, similar installations throughout the United States. Of course, Southwest Airlines is here, and also the second largest bottling uh, facility for Coca-Cola is within the city of College Park, located right beside Chick-fil-A. Advance. The key benefits of College Park, as I mentioned earlier, is that there are a number of cargo terminals. And you know that Mayor Reed's goal uh, is to turn the Atlanta airport into a 24-hour airport. Instead of it opening at 6 in the morning and closing around midnight and 1 o'clock in the morning, he wants it continually to get cargo even while we're asleep. So it's actually making more dollars for us and also they're creating additional jobs. The direct access to I-85 and I-285 and its close proximity to I-20 and I-75 are some of those major benefits, advance. Also, as far as the workforce, College Park is a very small place. Like I said, it's 11 square miles. We have a population that's just over 14,000. Um, but at the same time, we have a daytime population of over 325,000 because if you go to Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport, you have to pass through the city of College Park. Also, um, the average age is 30. It's probably about 32. I probably need to update that slide. But at the same time, half, I would say, over half of the population in College Park has a college education. Advance.
And then as far as business travel, we have over, uh, right now we have over 5,700 uh, hotel rooms, 34 hotels. Uh, we have, we're the home to the, the largest, uh, the second largest convention center in the state of Georgia, which is the Georgia International Convention Center. And at the same time, uh, Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is there, and they have over 20, now it's 2,600 uh, flights daily arriving and departing. And the four areas that I'm going to talk to you about this morning are, first is advanced, the downtown area, which is our residential area and retail, and then we have the Gateway Center area, it's located over in this area, that's where the Georgia International Convention Center is. We have the Industrial Corridor, and our Industrial Corridor area, uh, Recently, uh, I guess over the last two years, it's expanded. We have annexed over 300 additional acres of property in the city of College Park, and most of that is industrial space. And then we have the old national area, which is a huge redevelopment area, which we are going to work on setting up a redevelopment plan for it and possibly a second tax allocation district in, this, in uh, College Park. This is our first tax allocation district. This first tax allocation district was just started um, on January 1st, 2016. This is, um, it covers about 820 acres within the city of College Park and it covers our downtown area, a huge redevelopment area in our downtown area, our golf course, and then also along Camp Creek. I'm going to talk to you about a few projects recently. We've, had a rec we've uh, recently had two uh, new playgrounds installed in the city of College Park, and this is just a couple of those pictures of one of the parks at Bill Badger Stadium, Advance. And some additional pictures of that same playground, Advance. We've had streetscape improvements in downtown College Park. If you've been in Main Street and College Park, you've seen that we've removed the old sidewalks and we've replaced them with uh, streetscape pavers and large flower pots and trees, things of that nature. And this is another picture of some of those improvements afterwards. And then we've also um, added an electric, an electric car charging station in downtown College Park. In addition to this, we have a, uh, we're trying to promote more walking, walkability. Uh, we're also trying to promote um, having healthier lifestyles, and because of that, we have this charging station. We have also a new 1.7 mile pedestrian trail in College Park. We have also installed bikes, uh, bike racks uh, in downtown College Park. can't miss this. If you've ever driven down to downtown College Park, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't really feeling this building at first uh, when they were working on it, but over time I've kind of embraced it. If anything, if you have anybody that's from out of town and they're coming into College Park, you can always say, well, you're going to see this real ugly building. Now, two blocks from there, you make a right and you'll be at City Hall. <laughs> that's, that's what this building is good for, but we're, we're embracing the arts in College Park and hopefully we'll have more, uh, probably more conservative Art and college part <laughs> in the future. <laughs> we have uh, the new Mellow Mushroom that just uh, located in, in, on Virginia Avenue. This was actually an old Steak and Ale building. Who remembers Steak and Ale? I remember I took a prom, a prom date. Uh, I guess that's telling you how old I am. But I took a prom date to Steak and Ale way back in the day. You know, that was a place to go if you wanted to get, well, if you wanted to get a good steak. At least I thought so would be in high school at the time. But uh, the Steak and Ale had been closed for probably about almost 10 years, I would say, probably and it was just sitting there. And we, uh, we talked with uh, uh, some locals in the area, the one that opened a restaurant, and now we have a new uh, Mellow Mushroom restaurant, which is a big tackle on the side. They did a total gut uh, for renovation. They removed approximately 12 fireplaces, because you know Steak and Ale, they were mm -hmm. known for having a lot of fireplaces, but they removed all of them. It's a great facility now. Great pizza. 
Also, we have a new restaurant coming to downtown College Park. Uh, many of you may remember the Pecan Restaurant. Great restaurant, great food. Well, they have closed um, almost, I would say, almost six months ago now. But we are going to have our Radio Cafe will be locating in that space. Radio Cafe has an existing uh, restaurant in Decatur, Georgia. Advanced. And this is uh, our transit-oriented development map. Uh, of course, this is downtown Atlanta, and this is Main Street coming all the way to the city of College Park. Uh, this is the MARTA station in this area, and this is the FAA facility. Right here, we have a new development that's going in. It's called the Pad on Harvard, and it's right across the street from Hotel Indigo. Advanced. This is Atlanta again, this is Main Street, and this is what the build-out of the Pad on Harbor will look like right now. This is the 109 uh, units of multifamily uh, development. Uh, this particular, uh, College Park hasn't had any new multifamily development in it in over 45 years. So this is the first multifamily development in College Park in over 40 years. Uh, with that, we're going to be adding a new Aloft Hotel right here, right behind it. This 109 units will be completed um, within the next three weeks. Uh, we already have one floor leased up, it's uh, five floors. Um, the groundbreaking for the Aloft Hotel will be in December of this year. It'll be this is like an 18 month build out. And then right after that's completed, we're gonna start on an additional 157 units of multifamily development across the street. And they'll have, they'll have retail also, uh, approximately 25,000 square feet of retail restaurants in downtown College Park. And this is a little more of a detail of that same development. This is what you currently see that's under construction to be completed within the next three weeks. This is the Aloft Hotel. And then this is the multifamily development here, also parking deck and retail on both sides. Advance. And this is actual pictures of the pad on Harvard that's under construction. Advance. And this is the Gateway Center area. The Gateway Center area includes the Georgia International Convention Center the Marriott Hotel, Gateway Marriott office building, and the Spring Hill Suites. This is a parking deck right here in this particular section, advanced ones. Under construction is the Renaissance Hotel. That's an additional 200, 220 rooms that will be completed uh, in February of next year and then advanced again. We have a Marriott AC Hotel that will be located right off the Roosevelt Highway next to the Renaissance Hotel. That will, they will start construction actually in February, also in February 2017. And this is a recent picture of the Renaissance Hotel that's currently under construction. Also, over the last, uh, I said over the last 12 months, we have had the, uh, the redevelopment of, of an old Levitt's Furniture. Uh, Levitt's Furniture building was approximately 170,000 square feet. It had been closed up, had not been um, occupied by the furniture company for right at about eight years. This is located right off the Sullivan Road, which is located off of Old National Highway. That building was recently renovated. Uh, they tore down the wall. They increased that building by 30,000 square feet. Now it's approximately 200,000 square foot building. They removed an entire floor out of the inside of the building also. And that's an additional 200,000 square feet of usable class A industrial space that we have. And that's located right here. In addition to that, right now we have in the contract is a 30 acre site where we'll be adding an additional 480,000 square foot uh, class A um, industrial space. And that will be located right off of Roosevelt Highway. And that will accommodate about 150 trucks. Um, and we don't have a business for it yet, but when it comes online, it will come online pretty, it will uh, it'll fill up really quickly. And then we have some additional space down here, an additional 200,000 square feet of industrial space. And this is all under the same development. Advanced. 
this is a picture of that redeveloped uh, Levitt's building. Like I said before, there was um, weeds were growing through the concrete, graffiti on the walls. They only had about three bay doors where you see now there's approximately 12 or so. And even on the back side, there was a, there was a lot of damage uh, to the building. But now we have, you know, like I said, Class A industrial warehouse space. All right, that ends my presentation. I will address any questions that anyone might have. Uh, one thing I did not mention is that our first tax allocation district that covers most of, well, all of downtown, um, as well as um, some property along Main Street and also the property between downtown and the golf course, um, just just started. Uh, we're looking at that being our what we call is our airport city project. We estimate that that project will be right at about 1.5 billion dollar development uh, within that particular area between downtown College Park and the and the golf course. There's approximately 220 acres which the city of College Park owns. We're looking at developing that into a uh, mixed use development which will include um, very little residential because there's there are. Uh, deed restrictions on the property for residential because of the flight paths, but it'll have a lot of retail, hotels, entertainment, uh, and uh, various types of commercial, like office buildings there in that location. Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, the Hartsville-Jackson Airport is embarking on a $6 billion long-term project, of which probably a majority will just in the first few years. Are there parts of that project that will benefit directly um, City of College Park. Yes, um, if you would have, uh, I think that you may have seen in the news that I guess within the last, I guess three weeks, three weeks or so, three or four weeks, uh, the City of Atlanta or Invest Atlanta released that the contract had just been signed for the new five-star hotel to be located on the airport campus, and also I think it was like two or three hundred thousand square feet of office, and also a. Um, what they call it is a um, kind of a, a, a gas station type um, setup on the campus of the airport. Well, all of that is in the city of College Park. That entire development, um, that's going to be a huge, you know, boom to the city of College Park because it's located on the airport campus, but it's right beside the Gateway Center. So it's a huge. There's a lot of new <coughs> hotel or hospitality product there, which will also include some retail. Um, also, a lot of the improvements, like you said, a majority of that $5 billion will be used in the first three years mm -hmm. of the, pro of the um, overall build-out and development. A lot of that is underway right now. The new parking decks that they have that they're going to be building is also located in the city of College Park. They're going to be removing 14,000 uh, spaces of parking deck, and they're going to be coming back with 40,000. They're going to remove 7,000 from one side, add 20 and then 7,000 from the other, removing it and add 20 more. They're also going to be building some off, um, right beside the Georgia International Convention Center, they're going to be building a 7,000 space parking deck right behind the, uh, right beside the Marriott AC Hotel, which I told you was we were going to start construction in February, and right beside the Renaissance Hotel is going to be a 7,000 car parking deck there. So that's going to be, a, I guess, a provide us the opportunity to be able to have larger events and have parking for them. Also, they provide more temporary parking until the development is completed on the airport. Yes, ma'am. Arby, there seems to be an awful lot going on in that area, but the road, maybe this was mentioned before I arrived, but the road, Roosevelt Highway, Highway 29, is not sufficient enough to accommodate all that I heard you mentioned. So what is going to be done about that? For instance, if there's a catastrophe on 85 South, everybody coming south is going to come on to Roosevelt Highway. Right now, if something happens, it is unbelievable. I mean, it takes forever to go from the airport area Let's say it's Union City. Yeah. What are we going to do about that? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. That's all the more reason that we need to really get out and support T Squads. For many years now, there has been plans on the books to improve Roosevelt Highway, even adding additional lanes. Now, 
Of course, that hasn't happened because that's a huge undertaking financially. But not only do we need to improve the roads that are just in Fulton County, we need to make sure that our counterparts in the counties that connect to us on Roosevelt Highway will also improve their roads. Because if you have a four-lane road that comes into two, you're going to have the same problem that you had with just a two-lane highway. Mm -hmm. So to, let, to uh, answer your question, this, uh, the T-sponsored money is that type of money that we would use for that, as well as the local sponsor, uh, transportation spot, uh, the local money that we have within the local city's budgets for improvements to also match that GDOT money. So um, we're trying to improve that, and we know that things are just going to get worse here in the south metro area. Things are built to the point that in the north metro area, it's just kind of out of control. So of course, anybody moving to the area, if they can't move to the north, if they can't afford the north, they're going to move down to the south. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're going to have more traffic, and we're going to have more crowded roads, and we're going to have roads that are going to be, it's going to be more uh, expensive to maintain. All right. Yes, sir. Just a rough number of uh, new hotel rooms that you got between Gateway and downtown College Park. Right about there will be 140 rooms in the Aloft Hotel in downtown College Park. The Marriott AC Hotel will have 220 rooms. And now we have the Renaissance Hotel, which is just about completed, will have 220 rooms also. Okay. And that's not including the hotel. We have two hotels planned also for the Wally Park development off of Camp Creek. Those will be two limited service hotels. Okay. And they'll probably be about 135 rooms each. But we don't have any particular brands for those sites yet. Any more questions? Thank you guys for your time. So uh, I, I actually, uh, there's good fortune for three people in the audience. Mike Simpson from um, ATL Guide left gift certificates. And instead of doing a drawing, I think probably the best thing to do, um, these are $10 gift certificates to, there's two for Sideways Restaurants and one for Joffrey's Cafe, Cafe and Restaurant. I think probably the best thing to do is based on Artie's presentation, um, basically if anyone can name um, one of the new developments already talked with this presentation, you will get a $10 gift at the side of the restaurant. Can anyone name one of the developments? Yes, ma'am. The, um, the area that once was Levitt's, mm -hmm. that's going to be a All right. This is for you. Okay. And anyone else? Um, two the more. The pad on Harvard. Okay, and that's a one for sideways, and the last one to Joffrey's Cafe. The Hilton. Hilton. Artie, you're the official. Oh, I'm sorry, they're all they're all Marriotts. <laughs> 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 sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. 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 you also have the new um, Noel Mesh that's coming in. Okay. From the Sounds Olympics. good. Sounds in. good. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. And if, before we go, I, EJ, can you just talk about the, the Camp Creek Business Association new website? Since sure, you have sure, 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 sure. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity, please go to campcreekbiz.org. We just redeveloped or developed the entire Camp Creek Business Association website. Uh, in that website, you'll be able to have uh, full control of your Camp Creek Business Association membership. You'll be able to upload details about your business, get listed on a directory, uh, be able to upload member to member deals. Uh, you'll also be able to connect with your fellow CCBA members through our M Connect, uh, which is our online community. Um, we're we're going to be having new committees and different things of that nature come up. You'll be able to uh, connect with everybody, share files with everybody, chat with everybody, uh, stay up to date with any type of events that we have, post your own events. So if you have an event that's happening at your business, if you have a new business opening or something of that nature, you'll be able to let everybody know when that event is and they'll be able to stay connected. Uh, so all of that on the website, if you log in, you'll be able to access everything. Uh, click register, join, um, so that you can start getting connected to everything that's happening uh, in the CCBA. All right. Before we close, does anyone have any um, questions about development in the community? I guess there's one thing. 
since the uh, what announced the Ms. Stinson our, is now the general manager of this hotel. I want to thank her for her hospitality as our host and holiday. And we 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 love the hotel. We appreciate being the last two years. We look forward to uh, a, a continued long relationship. There's a great great host um, for helping us be here. The one thing I guess I'll announce, which Jeff told me, I guess the owners of this hotel, and this we're in the city of Atlanta, just to differentiate where we are, because we're in four jurisdictions here. On the other side of Movies ATL, I believe the next 60 days, you guys will be breaking ground on a Holiday Express Suites brand, which is long-term stay. Mm -hmm. So we're currently the that out parcel that's been undeveloped for a long time. It's in home too. A home too. A home too. We'll have a hotel there. <laughs> yes. And then behind, so then we'll have a deck. And one of the other projects that we're working on um, with um, Jeff was nice enough to invite me to the property owners meeting here, board meeting. And we're working with the city of Atlanta and trying to get some NPU legislation out. And our goal is this beautiful lake here is to have everything be legal. So hopefully in the beginning of the year, and we'll prevail upon our friends in the city of Atlanta to pass. Um, special use legislation so we can a open this back up and we can hopefully move towards this is a wish don't quote me on this is aspirational making this be a park which we hopefully name Tuskegee Airman Park after the parkway here and we have the ability to have this open for both passive and active recreation for the community and then for those that have been here for a while we open it back up and the gentleman that had the jet ski training he would come back and we'd have a park here because one of the things missing, there's several things missing here, you know, in terms of is entertainment and family entertainment for one, but second is outdoor activities. I think already made a great point about making communities more walkable, more livable, and I think having a 25-acre lake here, which you can do, you know, exercise, you can do reading, can't do fishing, but you can have like a 5K walk or run, but it's a, it's a place for the community to gather um, that's not concrete and we're big about economic development, but it's beyond that. So the families have a place to go. So hopefully in the spring next year, we'll be able to get that done and this, this, will, be, this will be open. But the best place to sit and enjoy the deck will be at the new M Hotel. Because if you look at the logistics of it, that hotel has a completely back view of this new lake we hope to have open in the spring. So with that, any questions about any other development or any other activities, CCBA, or even the uh, South Metro announcement I made before about bringing all the events together? If not, one last point. At, from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock at the GICC tonight, the uh, uh, Aerotropolis CID is having their open house for their strategic plan. And for those that don't know, the CID has been working for about nine months on a strategic plan. And as part of their charter, you know, they focus on a few things. I mean, one, it's about public safety, transportation, uh, but also economic development. And they, I participate in the process as a stakeholder. They have a tremendous, tremendous plan they're going to unveil today for what their plans are for transportation, and that's a big issue for many people, congestion. Um, they have a piece for that, but they have a complete holistic view about what they'll be doing with their dollars to invest directly in this area um, for which is this part and extends down to Virginia Avenue, and I think they're also working to go to the unincorporated part of College Park as well as part of the process. So what they're going to share tonight is going to be a major piece about what development's going to happen. And what CIDs do is CIDs, think about it this way, CIDs plant, water, and pave so you have all the things to make economic development a much more fertile activity. And then invariably, they also recruit and attract new commercial businesses to come. So, you know, we talk about obviously the new Brave Stadium in SunTrust Park. A big part of why they're there is the CID, which behind the scenes helped pull that together. So, the CID, so if you have a chance, um, four to seven, the GICC, if you don't make it, I will get whatever the information they have as collateral and make it available online. Uh, obviously, it will be on our Facebook page, and obviously, it will be on our new website, which was just launched. So with that, I hope everyone had a great day, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.